Okay. Hello, everybody. We are live now. (laughs) How's it going? I think maybe we'll see. We're here. Thank you so much for joining us in this early evening, late afternoon Tales from the Loop show. Hopefully the audio is sounding okay. If not, you know what? It really doesn't matter because this is 1980s and shit didn't always work too. So, hi. Welcome, friends. Um... We're just going to bounce right into this. Uh, So, hello, hello, and welcome to the very first episode of Rewind 89. Tonight, we'll be grabbing our Walkmans and using corded touch dial phones because it is 1989 and we are playing Tales from the Loop. If you are not familiar with Tales from the Loop, we're going to explain the rules of the game real quick and how we'll be playing it here tonight. But first, we'd like to take a moment and thank our show producer, The Awkward LLC, which is a media company focused on elevating content creators and assisting in their production value and growth. Without them, this wouldn't, uh, this wouldn't be a thing. So, let's take a moment and learn about Tales from the Loop. Tales from the Loop is based on the imaginative art from Simon Stalinhag, and converted into a tabletop role-playing game by Free League using the Year Zero system. Taking place in the 1980s that never was, you'll find plenty of things familiar here to give you that excellent 80s nostalgia, but with a little extra dash of some sci-fi elements. Each player has created a character aged 10 to 15, based on classic 80s tropes like the jock or the computer nerd, which will help determine how good they are at certain skills needed in the game. Players roll from a pool of six-sided dice to determine the outcome of their actions. The more sixes they roll, the more successful they'll be. They each also pick one iconic item, which not only is special and unique to that kid, but also increases their dice pool by two. Kids are also able to use luck and are able to re-roll their dice throughout the game until their luck runs out. The younger the kid, the more lucky they are. And probably my favorite mechanic of the game is known as checking your pride. This is something that was predetermined during character creation and comes up only once in game. It's that pivotal moment in the climax of a movie when the hero needs to step up and do something extraordinary to overcome the obstacle. And in this case, the kid can check their pride for an automatic success. So, let's take a moment and learn about the kids. We will uh, we'll go around the table. And welcome, everybody. Uh, If you all don't mind, we will get your names and tell us who you are, who you're playing, uh, your character's pronouns, uh, what archetype they're going to be today, uh, the iconic item that you all chose, and what, uh, I don't know, little little something about them, uh, personality, a little factoid, uh, something that they enjoy, maybe their favorite song, uh, things of that nature. And uh, how about uh, we start up top corner? Uh, since you were uh, the first to arrive today on time. Hi, Jess. Go, JT. How's it going? Yeah, you call me out. (laughs) (laughs) Listen, I'm tough. I'm the rocker. I can't be known for being on time. (laughs) Hi, I'm Jess. You can find me at go underscore JG. And today I am Billy Houston. Uh, They use they, them pronouns. They are the rocker. Their iconic item is their leather jacket. Um... (laughs) uh yeah they uh no one understands them except the guy at the music store you know they really they really get me really gets me he's the only one no one else understands but uh as is the way when you're 13 years old um but yeah billy's just Mm -hmm. uh in it for some adventure there to protect their friends um and maybe occasionally steal some shit from some assholes. Oh, am I allowed to? <laughs> you Hi. could totally fucking swear here. Okay, good. Because I just did. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we're excited to uh, to see Billy in action. Um, I, it, 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 I'm, just, I'm just excited for everybody. I can't wait for y'all to play. Um, we will uh, flip out over to the top. Uh, in what one two three? What's up, Paul? How you doing tonight? Yo, what's up? My name is N1123, aka. Oh, wait, no, I'm Paul, aka N1123. <laughs> I'm, I'm off to a great start. Yeah. All right. I'm um, super excited. I 
am gonna be okay. This music is actually distracting. Hold on. Okay, I am actually playing Thomas Forge. He's a popular kid, but he's only popular because um, you know, he's rich and kids like shiny things, I guess. Uh, so a lot of people want to get to know him so they can kind of see what he's all about. His family is pretty well known. They are the a Forge family who are owners and uh, I guess developers in Forge Robotics and Development. And yeah, he's just kind of like, you know, Thomas is just a, kind of a down to earth, not really, he's kind of a dick. And he does not really like a lot of people simply because he comes from a family uh, that's very competitive. And he, his entire life, he's just been driven and uh, been drilled, hey, you need to be better. So in his mind, he believes that he's better because he is better than everybody. Also, he has four other siblings and they're all assholes. So that should be fun. I mean, oh, right. My, I, my iconic item is a little red notebook that he writes all his designs and uh, thought processes on when he's trying to build and develop new robotics for himself. And yeah, that's it. That's awesome. all I got. Digging it. as hell. Digging it. Right? Yeah. It, intros are, are wild, aren't they? Oh my gosh. Okay. So. Uh, next up, how about we uh, we go say hi to Gabe? What's up, Gabe? How you doing? You ready? Yeah. Hi, I'm Gabe. Gabe James Games on Twitch, Twitter, and pretty much anywhere else on the internet. I use he, him. Uh, my character is um, Loen Magnum Jet. Uh, my iconic item is a drawing pad. I, I, I'm, I'm not an artist, though, but I will be. And I, I draw things that I think are cute and cool. Um, I'm the weirdo, but my mom says I'm beautiful, so it doesn't matter. Uh, and I, I, I like hanging out in the woods. And I think I met a deer that might have been an elder god once, so that's an interesting thing. But um, it might have been a deer, who knows? But I'm excited because I've I've met like these new kids, and they haven't bullied me yet. So I think that means it. I might have friends. Or, never mind, not a good answer. That's me. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Lowen. It's a pleasure to meet yeah, you. You're you are beautiful. You are. <laughs> 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 and now we're going to kick it on over to Lauren. How's it going? How you doing? You ready? Yes, I'm so ready. Hey, everybody. I'm Lauren. I'm that salty ginger over on Twitter and half of Salty Sweet Games here on Twitch. And today I'm playing the troublemaker to no one's surprise. Beverly Carlson goes by Bev. She's 12. She's the baby of the group, but don't you dare say that. Anyway, her iconic item uh, is uh, a lighter and a uh, pack of cigarettes because, hi. Also, my dad says I'm good for nothing. Again, to no one's surprise. Um, she's very much a uh, tomboy. She's super happy to like have this group. This group is like everything to her. It's the only thing in her life that isn't super broken. Um, and I'm super excited to play. I can't wait. Yes, I'm. Oh, wow, Paul. <laughs> have we all got the <laughs> Paul's excitedness? Game? Hell yeah, man. Dude, oh my goodness. I just blessed the rain in Africa. Okay, that's what I'm looking <laughs> right So you know I'm all about it right now. Yes. What's what's great is that I think all of you have different playlists turned on right now. And so like it's just gonna be different moods coming from each of you. And I wonder, based on your movements, if we can figure out like what song you're listening to. Oh, you definitely can with me. I'm a very <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah <laughs> uh but we gotta we're gonna we're gonna pause real quick and do a uh our, our first freaking challenge bar uh let me even just fucking introduce it mike thanks buddy uh thanks to unmade gaming uh the challenge bar has already been filled um what that is is if you tip the stream uh using one of the links somewhere down below i don't know click the big 80s looking logo that does the thing there's it there as well um that is money that goes right back into the cast's pockets. Uh, it is a way to support them and say thank you for uh, their time and for participating here on the show. But truly more importantly, it's so that we could fuck them up. The challenge bar means that 
we get to include a new challenge that the kids must overcome. And this can come in many different types of flavors. It can be a completely random type of encounter. Um, maybe there's some, like, you know, creature lurking in the woods, and now they have to actually go deal with that rather than it just being a rumor that they've heard about. It could be in the middle of an action when they are trying to be successful at something. Let's say they are riding their bike and they're pedaling really fast and they are trying to go make this, this you know, leap over something. Well, maybe the tire gets flat. So it's an obstacle that they now have to figure out how to overcome. It's not something that's going to hinder their story or hinder the, the actions in the game, but it is something that's going to make it a little more difficult. So, yes, hashtag Crystal Pepsi. We wish. I wish. We all want that right now. Nobody wants that right now. Anywho. So that's the challenge bar. You can, you can fill that out. Help us out. We'd greatly appreciate it. And uh, see what story elements kind of come from it. But I think... We're going to dive into this. We are, uh, we're, we're, we're just going to jump right in, explain the setting a little bit, and then we'll set the scene. So our setting in particular takes place in the spring of 1989 in the northern suburbs of Chicago, Illinois, where a company called Rick Synergy constructed its third loop facility. So what is the loop? The loop is a prodigious particle collider operating deep underground. Looming in the backdrop of the town of Hawthorne Heights, where we're located, are three massive nuclear exhaust towers. It's commonplace for weird things to happen when you live near the loop. Pets may go missing. You may hear strange noises coming from the sewers. And there's even rumors of eight-legged raccoons that are rummaging through garbage cans or maybe consuming them entirely. Most people blame that on just rowdy teenagers, but that's still a pretty common rumor. So we are here, and for how, how we're going to set this up, how we're going to actually play the game here and how I like to run it is... Tales from the Loop allows you all to be directors. There's a camera, and we're going to pass that camera around and set the scene and see what happens. So the first half of the show is going to be dedicated to all of the kids. We're going to learn more about the kids, how they interact with each other, how they interact with their other friends, their family, their teachers, their coaches. Um, this is the opportune time that we get to get to know them. Then... Once we've kind of wrapped up a little bit with the kids, we're going to shift more focus into the mystery. And so everybody's going to be together and I'll be setting that particular scene. Now, before I hand the camera off, we are going to dive into the first eh, micro scene of tonight. There is, we'll say that the camera shifts and it's nighttime. It's, it's relatively dark outside, maybe maybe like 10 o'clock in, in the evening. And there are the, the camera focuses uh, very low to the ground um, with blades of grass just kind of gently blowing in the wind. And you can see just beyond those large blades, uh, a smooth baseball field. Um, you, there, there are bright field lights that are shining down that are just completely elevating the field itself. And in the backdrop, there is this, you know, the, the home run fence, um, a little rusted out. Uh, it still has some of the, the bright yellow, um, kind of like bumper on the top of it. And beyond that, there are trees, just a massive forest in the background where it's just silhouetted against the backdrop of a beautiful night sky. And it's, it's, it's relatively quiet. The, the, the kids have all gone home from the game. There's, there's nobody here anymore. But as the, the camera just kind of like shifts upwards and it looks outwards towards the woods, there's just this bright beam of light. <laughs> that rockets across the sky and slams into the ground. From there, the camera dims and reappears once more. And we just see this wreckage 
trees incinerated the the earth is just charred there is dirt and debris just scattered everywhere the camera is shifting through this this wreckage and there are pieces of metal there's there's machinery in, in another area there's just mechanical parts that look completely foreign to our eyes but in the center is a small box maybe no 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 bigger than maybe 5 5 feet 5 feet long and you can hear in the background the sounds of um, police cars, of sirens whirring in the just far off distance. But the camera keeps focusing on this, on this almost almost tomb, almost casket of some sort, and you can hear like a ktss, ktss, as it pops open, and the hydraulics shift, and the top panel just. Ktss, whirs open and smoke just billows out and, and and just moves all over covers the entire area and we see a small metallic hand humanoid in nature four fingers reach over the side of the of this coffin and the camera cuts fast forward about a day or two and we're going to start with a kid's scene so, dear kids, where where do we find you today? What What is it you want to do today? Are you all together? You separate? You going to meet up somewhere? Chilling at the mall? You tell me. I think we said we were together and we were having a discussion. <laughs> yeah. I think it was at our amazing and absolutely loving club that we all are so passionate about <laughs> there our av club and uh we were discussing something vital very important mm -hmm. uh so what what's the time frame is it just like any time frame or what do we pick the time frame you you, you could pick the time of day you could you could pick okay cool whenever wherever you want this is so your are, we, are we actually at school are we at AV club? I think it's AV club, I think. I think it's after school. Yeah. At AV club. Yeah, and we're we're, yeah. we're all like just kind of sitting around doing what we do all together as always, you know. Um Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think Thomas would be kind of like reclusive to not join the group but still be with the group so he's kind of just sitting there working on a little design just kind of waiting to see what everyone else 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 has to say hunched over looking down kind of eyeing back and forth like a gremlin <laughs> I, I think lowen's probably looking at thomas and then like drawing oh <laughs> lowen yeah yes what are you doing drawing an alien <laughs> What? Do you want to see it? Not really. Looks like I this. Mean, well, what? Well, you are very close. Back, push. I can't. Where? Where do you? Where do you? Where did you come up with that? I thought that they might have freckles. No, not not the. No, I meant like where did you? Why are you drawing that? Because if I don't draw them with freckles, who will? I'm not talking about the freckles, Lowen. I'm talking. <laughs> I just keep looking at it. Adding to my alien. Thomas starts like tapping his pen on on his drawing pad. Did did what are we what are we doing again? We're trying to come up with a name for the hideout. And Beverly is what? she's got like uh the chalk and she's up at the chalkboard in the classroom, which they're probably not supposed to use. But um, okay, how about some word associations, right? You want to use words for a name. That makes sense. Very creative, Bev. Was that sarcastic? Were you, gonna... <laughs> Were you planning on like using voicing an image somehow? Did you want to? Oh, we are the audio visual club. That's, mm. that's really smart. But then how would we communicate that? 
What? Words? <laughs> words. With words. We yeah, would do no, it with I'm, words. I agree with you, Bev. <sighs> Thank you. Right. So what, what, any ideas? What'd you guys come up with? Okay, how about this? Ready? Yes. Okay. The whole. The. <laughs> you do realize we, we, they were, they're, tr there's, there's no association with a hole in what we found. How does that well, work? Well, we made a hole in the roof of that one car. We, we so. did make lots of holes. In with that logic, car. we should call it wheels and metal. But, but the hole is clever, because if we say we're going to the hole, no one's going to expect that place. They're going to think we're jumping into a hole. That's okay. Then they'll look in the wrong place. I don't know. It doesn't really fit it, right? Like a hole is just a hole. Hole is where the heart is. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's already got a rad saying. Hole is where the heart is. Uh huh. I I read. There's like uh, uh my parents were talking about it. Um, this this guy made a thing, and then there's something called liches that have like things in it, and they keep their hearts there. So this could you... be like our hole. Are you talking about a phylactery? Yeah, a factory. A factory? We, the factory. Yeah. Oh. I mean, we're not are we, we're not really like making stuff there though. Look, listen. Th there was clearly some really cool stuff there that is connected to this, and uh, and Thomas is like sarcastically over gesturing the club so maybe we should go with something that is connected might flow better uh okay let's look around thomas mm. is like uh oh nothing school related like it has to be a beat club hmm. um and bev Dimmer. like starts opening the opening the teacher's drawers whoa bev you're not you can't what are you doing they're open D d you oh Hold on. And she takes out um a big handful of Bev, just put, cables. Put that stuff back. Stop just pulling things out. This is what this is what almost got you kicked out last time. Teacher's not here, so look, it's like it's like a cable car, right? It's like an old cable car, and these are cables. That's a good point. Well, we can't call it cables. That doesn't sound cool. No, I'm not. Well, what kind of cables are these? Uh, auxiliary cables. Auxiliary. Um. <laughs> Exhilarating. Uh, let's try that again. Um, yeah, maybe the other half of the word. Ox. Yeah, it's got an X in it. Ox. I'm gonna just. Ox. Ox. Like the animal? The ox. It kind of sounds like the animal. You the know, ox? the animals. Like big. So that's good because cause it'll like throw people off the scent if yeah. they're like the ox and they don't realize what we're actually saying is like ox because they just don't get it. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. they're not an AV club. I, at this ox. point, I don't. I don't it, what, it, that sounds good. What about me. the ox cable? I think just ox was good. I think okay. we'll dial ox. it back. I think when you yeah, said ox. ox. So that, that's what you guys are going to agree on? The ox? Well, what do you... I'm, I'm just saying. Unanimous decision sounds good to me. Yeah. Unanimous means everyone agrees. So do you agree, Tommy? Thomas. Don't, don't call me Tommy. Ooh, Tom. And uh, it's Thomas. Thomas. <sighs> yes, I agree. I guess. But like, do you guess or do you like really, really mean it? Are you feeling it? What is yeah. going on right now? Yes, I agree. I agree. It's fine. I, I, I we established this name is okay. Now I, we got to, and then Thomas starts like organizing, cleaning, like the actual responsibilities of what the AV <laughs> club is supposed to do. <laughs> not realizing they spent like 20 plus minutes, on, like just, running around and rummaging through the teacher's desk. <laughs> Gosh. 
I love it. So, so you've all figured out the um, the the name of your hideout. You're 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 hanging out in a uh, an AV club, and um, as you're kind of rummaging <laughs> through the just all of the drawers, the teacher's desk, because because the the AV club room where you typically hang out, right? This is um, it, it's it's an actual classroom, and there is, it just happens to be connected to like a closet where the AV equipment can be stored. It's not like a dedicated awesome av type room and you hear uh the the doorknob the you know uh the the handle kind of jiggling and the door swings open and walking in is samantha johnson who is a we didn't determine what grade y'all are in you're all 12 and 13 i don't know what the equivalent of that is but i don't know like seventh grade? eighth grade seventh grade something yeah. around there sure she's an eighth grader and so she's a grade above us or yeah, she if, is our if, grade or your grade it, it depends i guess on just like what what age uh um, okay what age you are um she's she's an eighth grader and she's got um long blonde hair that is uh crimped uh and just just that total frizz right and she's got these cute clips in her hair she's got bangles all over like you could hear her coming down the hall from like a mile away right and she's just wearing super vibrant colors, you know, cinched waist shirt, um, you know, one uh, one sleeve kind of forced off of the shoulder because, you know, didn't like cut it or anything. She's working at it. OK, it takes time to get that look right. <laughs> and you you know her to be um, kind of like a goody two shoes. Right. So she she comes in and she kind of sees all of you. Where are you all positioned? right now as you're hanging out in this AV slash classroom. Uh, I think when Samantha comes in, uh, Beverly like drops the cables back in and like sits in the teacher's chair, which is one of those rolly chairs that you're not supposed to sit in. Yeah, that's where I am. Great. Thomas would be like across from the the line of sight of the door and by the drawers, the shelves and just kind of like organizing things and writing stuff just mm -hmm. sitting kind of okay. like you can see a clear distance between him and the other three <laughs> uh billy is pacing around between everyone ready to like throw their hands up when like people are being <laughs> difficult just like you can't and you can't do that as good sitting down so they're they're pacing <laughs> around the room <laughs> lowen's in like a deep squat in the middle of the floor perfect <laughs> Great, great place to be. Is Samantha a part of the AV club? So Samantha is not part of the AV club because AV club is definitely for nerds and she's not a nerd. And she looks to Bev and just kind of like, ah, you know, you're not supposed to be sitting at the teacher's desk, right? She's like, that flips her like off. just chewing her gum with her mouth wide open. It's just awful <laughs> bev just flips her off what are you what are you doing here samantha well apparently getting insulted and i'm not here for this but i just wanted to let you know that like the um whatever little club that you've got going on it's canceled today yeah why, why? i don't know do i look like your secretary Yes. Uh, you know, I did just come in here delivering news, so which a secretary does kind of do. Well, yeah. that's only because, like the the actual secretary asked me to do this. So, so you're a like, secretary, secretary. 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 Uh, yeah. Mm. You're like a you're like an intern. You're not even good enough to be the actual secretary. Second class secretary. Mm. Yuck. Oh, you're like a horse secretariat. <laughs> That's so good. Her face is like flushed with, with a, a, a combination of just like anger and embarrassment. It's really like the look on her face is just contorted. Like she doesn't know to be appalled or upset. And I think she's going to like just just stare at you guys and kind of do one of those like very secretary things like the horse trot right where she lifts her foot up and just stomps it on the ground it's like well 
Take what you want with that news or leave it. I don't care. Bye, nerds. And she just like walks out. I, as she's leaving, I say, I, I drew you a picture. I don't care. Throw it in the garbage. I thought it made you look nice. She Is this the one bad. with the freckles? Oh, she, I yes. think she's gone. All right, <laughs> yes. well, if you want, we can send it to her later. Oh, okay. did you draw her like a horse? Yeah, I added legs. <laughs> That's so Samantha. <laughs> you never let us down, Loan. <laughs> no. Man. Gra gravity does that. <laughs> well, I mean, if AV Club is canceled, what am I supposed to do now? He kind of just looks at you through, like, what do you guys usually do? We could go to the Ox. Mm-hmm. But that place is newly christened. That place is dirty. I made it a logo. See, look, it says the ox, and it's an ox cord with bullhorn. <gasps> That's so oh good. We need to put that on there. We I want to get that tattooed. I had Thomas is carefully. clearly impressed, but he's trying to hold it in because <laughs> a couple of my other drawings look like nasty things. What? The, Don't the, worry about it. I'm yeah, okay. About it. Um. Well, I mean, yeah, I guess we could. I mean, it, it, I look at the time. What time is it? It's probably What'd like, like? 3.30, 4 o'clock-ish. I don't know what time uh, school gets out. Man, I haven't been to school in forever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, we can. I mean, the, the the ox does need a little bit of cleaning, and it's still a mess, and there is that hole. No, the hole is cool. I don't, I don't, I, I still don't get that. How is that? acceptable is what if it rains then you but then go, we go in the other cars right there are three cars do you not know how water it's still there the stuff in there will get i i really can't fix the hole you guys are really not going to let me just patch it up that's why we laid down beach towels thomas i this, thought you were the smart one come this on make, i i am this are you <sighs> Bev, I was go to the ox, I guess. Whatever. Lone pulls out an actual strawberry from his pocket and is just eating a water. Where did you get that? Our pocket. You don't use any kind of like wrapper? It's just in your pocket? No. Well, yes. That was two questions. I expected two answers. Oh. I look at the time again. <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah. I can't go. I can't go home yet. All right, whatever. Let's just go. Let's, I need to get out of here. This is. I don't want to go right home now. either. All right, so you are deciding to head to the ox mm -hmm. slash yes. hole. The ox. No, not that. Not that. I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent. Uh, is there anything that you? Uh, how, how are you guys getting there? Actually, that's kind of important. Uh, none of you can drive. So, we have bikes. Do I have a butler? Do you have a bike? Do you have? <laughs> Do you a have a butler? Bu what's a butler? Or like a Robot what's a butler. what's the name? Like um, not, like like a chauffeur? babysitter? Yeah, chauffeur. Like a nanny? babysitter. <laughs> nanny. There you go. Nanny. Yeah, yes. hundred percent. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, one hundred. You do. Nanny. Absolutely. Okay, as we're walking, as we're walking out, I would assume my nanny would be waiting, just like. Because mm -hmm. they have nothing else to do. Mm -hmm. So do we have to sneak by them? Oh, sneak by my nanny. Right. Are, are so, they just gonna take you home? Yeah. I so, so you're true. usually on a tight schedule, right, Thomas? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like you're you're really not allowed to like your your family uh, who, who runs uh, Forge Robotics, right? They they keep you on a tight schedule. They know yeah. where you're supposed to be, when you're supposed to be. Now, whether or not your parents actually know that information, there is a schedule and there's somebody paid to make sure that you follow that schedule. So you right. do know that if if your nanny sees you, she's going to question where you're going and what are you doing with that time now? Because it's not part of the schedule. Oh, shit. Oh, crap. This is a oh God, first decision. OK, um, we could go out the window. I know how to open them. I'm not going to ask why you know that, but I mean, you yeah, I. They're locked. I, oh. 
Well, either way, we can't go through the front. I can't. They're I, they're gonna make me go home, and I I really prefer not to. So, Bev, you're experienced in this, right? Yeah, and uh, she being a delinquent. Go- yeah, being a delinquent. <laughs> and How you're would not you proceed with this? Being a square. Can't, we can't be a shape, but whatever. Just how, how would you proceed you with can. this? You <laughs> can. <laughs> Beth like reaches under the desk, I think, where uh, there sometimes is a key, I think, for the windows that the teachers use. E- either a key or like a tool that like lets them. It's like what, like, it's like just they're... like an Allen wrench. Like, it's, yeah, it's totally. nothing special. Yeah, totally. And she pulls it out, holds it out. Okay. Wait, what do we? What? Do, what are, <laughs> Tom's just like, yes. This is an Allen wrench. I know what an Tom. Allen wrench is. I'm just checking. Goes over to the window and starts uh, unscrewing it. Great. Yeah. She, no. No problem. You. You are able to just kind of like twist it, and uh, it's. It's still kind of like one of those. It, it's the 80s so like the safety windows aren't quite there yet um so it kind of like pops open enough that you could all slip through yeah i think thomas would go last out of the sheer embarrassment that he's probably scared (laughs) he's like uh yeah all right cool ladies first i guess and bev goes first i don't get either billy or lowen I'll go. See, now it's okay that you're. A I don't want to see your. Uh, just go through. Just, just go. go just go. I just wish go. I could give advantage in this game because <laughs> you are killing me right now. Just, just go. Let's Lowen. go out the window. Billy, do you need help? You gonna be nah, okay? I'm. No, nah, I'm fine. You can go. I'm. I'm follow right behind. Okay. Like, climb up. And then Thomas would just attempt to follow, but like pauses for a little bit. He's like, oh, I, what am I doing? And then we'll just do his best, but he stumbles. He's like very uncoordinated and he's not good <laughs> with his legs. So he tries. Great. So you, you, you are all uh, sneaking around the school, exiting uh, through a completely different direction that you know that like the carpool lane would be in and making your way to the ox. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, and shift and shift the scene a little bit. We're gonna do a little fast forwarding. And what are you listening to? Because it's amazing. Is that what uh, you're listening to on the way somebody? there? Yes. Yeah. I'm into. It. That's it. That's, what that's do they the jam. Have? Do they have um? Oh, what are they called? Walkmans. Walkmans. That's yes. an eighties thing. Yep. Walkmans yeah. were yeah. definitely the, kind, the, the thing. kind that has the really crappy simple metal strip and then yes. two yellow poofed. Oh yeah. my gosh! Yeah, your pieces, I've, and I've then just to, a, like, I gotta bring them next time. I'll wear yeah, them next time on stream. <laughs> They're so that's uncomfortable. What I have. Perfect. I love it. Um, so we'll we'll say that um, Bev dances on the way. Bev's dancing on the way. Nice. So your your Walkman's going right, Bev, and it's oh, it's no. just tuned to the to the FM radio right now um because cassettes are still kind of expensive and maybe you want like more of a mix and it's the radio everybody loves the freaking radio right mtv's kind of getting really big like everyone's listening to the radio right now and your your feed is actually uh interrupted and the the music stops and you hear hey uh, yeah. Oop, that's not the right one <laughs> Rip. We'll fix that. That's not a, uh, you know, whatever. It's fine. <laughs> I click the. If you heard the like excited, <laughs> terrified laugh from me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. We're jumping right into the sci-fi. Right? <laughs> yeah, the, the sci-fi is in here right away. No, wow. Where did that really biffed that up? Uh, there we go. All right, I got it. I, I promise, promise maybe, maybe this, this is, is the right, right one. one. I don't know. We'll, we'll find, find out. out. Hashtag, Hashtag pro stream. stream. You, you hear. All right. 
all you cool cats and dogs. Thanks for tuning in. Unfortunately, we, we had to cut right into that beautiful song to let you all know that if you are out on the streets, you're probably going to want to head in. We heard that there was a, a big old crash out there the other night. And it might have been toxic, so if you're able to stay indoors, please make sure that you head to the nearest facility, to go home, get in your cars, whatever you need to do to just, you know, stay safe out there. Uh, Rick Synergy is going to be taking it all under control from here. And now, back to the beats. Beats, beats, beats. And it, it goes right back to... Uh... Now it's under pressure. <laughs> which is even better. Perfect. But um, she takes off the Walkman and kind of stops... Uh, apparently there's some kind of crash. I, like a where? car crash? No, some kind of like, I don't know. They said I was like toxic or something. Is it near town? They don't really say. They just oh. had to go inside. We're not going to listen, are we? No. Well, I mean, I, the ox is inside. Technically just go in inside. We'll There's just go in the hole. close. We'll go in the closed off cart, Thomas. He just kind of does one of those like, okay. They're not all. They don't all have holes in them. Just the one that we put holes in. <laughs> okay. I mean, I don't know. It sounds like you know if they're publicly announcing that everyone should possibly go inside, it is probably something dangerous. What did they say exactly? That it was maybe toxic and you should go inside. I, you, what? You, okay, I, it's my Walkman. I'm telling you what I heard. Okay. I mean, listen, it, fine. Whatever. We'll just go to the ox, to the non- Good, because I can't hear you because my music is very loud. He just stares at Bev. And then he just starts walking towards the ox. I think Lowen dances behind Bev with no music, but just trying to imitate like her movements. Yes. <laughs> She's a cool one. Uh, love it. So we'll say uh, you all make it to the Ox. Where, first off, where is the Ox located? Like what, what, what type of area is it? And I would like you all to describe the Ox. Um, what do you all what y'all come up with? This is your hideout, which mechanically, for those of you tuning in at home, uh, the hideout is a place where the kids can go and it's their safe space. This is this is the place where they they can they can heal themselves uh, from conditions. They can heal each other from conditions, which is a mechanic in the game. Um, if they are feeling scared or sad and just need a safe place to go, that's where they can go. Um, I, as a GM, I can't intrude. I can't break things in there. I can't steal things in there. It is their place of peace. So, what's the ox? Well, for those who don't know, which is everybody except for us, the ox is our hideout, and it is a three-cart derailed old-fashioned train i believe right okay i want to make sure i got that right if i didn't mm -hmm. that'd be really embarrassing um but yeah and i think it's one one's probably like derailed the other two are probably like off the rail and then the third one's probably like still on the hinges but like rusted um it's obviously abandoned because we've moved on to better things and it's like just there you know and as billy said there is a giant hole that they made in one of them um, I imagine that each of us probably dictated a corner or a, a set area for ourselves that we would probably make our home and then like a communal area. That's how I would picture it. And it's just like, you know, like that. Um, Thomas would obviously take the one that isn't busted up as much and doesn't have the hole. And he just has, for him, like his little area is just straight up just sheets of paper that has random diagrams. Everything's in like perfect order. Everything is like it looks like he used a freaking ruler to measure the corner pieces of every spacing. Um, that's pretty much it. It's very organized, and he tries to keep it clean as much as he can. It's like brooming outdoors. That's like what he does. Uh, but yeah, I don't know what else, guys. 
<laughs> I don't I don't know. I think uh I think Bev's area um has some of the rattier furniture in it and um she's used uh paint and markers to write a bunch of different uh quotes on the wall. Um all kinds, some from books, just some from uh, famous historical figures. Um, and uh, I think her favorite place is in the car with the hole. Um, I think she likes to lay on the beach towel and smoke in there and like look up at the sun. I would imagine we also put up a bunch of, I, oh yeah, we talked about putting wall decorations. Yeah. Like the carts have some Pro old school propaganda and like just random things that we've all gathered. Probably a ton of uh, Lowen's drawings are plastered randomly throughout the entire place, like in the most inconvenient spots to look for them. That's what I imagine. And uh, I'm Thomas would definitely be extremely annoyed every time Lowen sneaks into one of his drawings on his diagrams. Um, exactly. <laughs> I'm trying to think what else do we say about the uh hideout we did you um there's like a broken tv and but a working radio set yeah like there's, yeah so there's like there's because because we discovered it previously used some so right. some other kids had sort of taken over this space and like somewhat decorated it somewhat put some old furniture in it stuff like that and then abandoned it um so this poor train car is multiple times abandoned and uh we have reclaimed it and adopted it as our own yep um because we're good like that and uh yeah there's a broken tv but a working like like old old radio um like a ham that you, radio or something. yeah that you like that you really have to like search for stuff on like it doesn't um and then there's like there's a bunch of like smashed stuff outside because like it was abandoned by older kids who had like you know come here with a baseball bat and there's a baseball bat just outside amongst the smashed things. Um, that's sort of you, that's sort of super cool, cool, huh? cool. And I think out. it's I think it's near the water too. Like it's near yeah. the tracks and near water or somewhere. It there's a lot of things that show different time frames here. It looks like pieces of time kind of abandoned it. So there was like parts where the companies were going to reclaim it, but then for some reason they never did. So maybe there's like leftover crowbars, nails, little pieces of just old railing. Then there's the time frame of maybe kids before us. They obviously used it. So there's some older school equipment and, you know, little names like written across stories that they've written that we really don't care too much about, but, you know, keep around. Uh, and then there's us where we just go around gathering random things and just kind of tossing it in there, making it our home away from home, I guess. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and shift the scene a bit. All right. Uh -oh. But we're not going to shift it too far. We're just going to shift the focus. You made it. It's the same time, same day, same everything. You have made it to the Ox, your your home away from home, a, a teenage wasteland refuge, and you're just there. You're hanging out. You're you're doing the thing, uh, Bev. Maybe you've got the music cranked up, um, you know, and you're just kind of like jamming out with, um, with Billy, um, Lowen. Maybe you're drawing just you know, doing your thing or you're in there dancing too. And as you're, you're, you're all just kind of enjoying yourselves and doing whatever it is that kids do when they're alone. Um, you, you hear like this scratching against the side of one of the carts. It, it, it sounds metallic in nature but it is not a normal sound that you would expect to hear it is you know th there shouldn't be anybody near um you know most people have no idea that this little area exists and there's there's not a tree that's rubbing against it um it's just a very peculiar sound what is it you're doing 
Thomas would hear it and immediately just assume that Bev is being loud. And he would just look over and be like, Bev, can you just not be so loud? Walks over, turns up the radio. He kind of Th- Thomas just kind of throws his pen. I thought we agreed on a mutual con- Be- can just tries to just draw and draw and just keep diagramming and then looking for like looking around and seeing what uh Lowen and Billy are doing, see if why they aren't like very utterly confused, like why they aren't bothered by this. I, I think Lowen's just gonna look in the direction of the sound and it, like a deer in the headlights just not move. Okay. Okay. I think um Hmm. It's so the car with the hole in it. I wonder if we've like stacked something so that we could like get out the top. And I think that might be what I feel like you I, I feel like yeah. you would. I feel like maybe Bev um yeah, climbs up and will like look out after she turns up the music. <laughs> All right. Uh go ahead, Bev. Why don't you make the first roll of the game? No pressure, no it. pressure. Don't uh, fuck up. I mean, fuck up. <laughs> you can't you can't you can't fuck up in this game, man. It's sure. it's like uh sure it's just, just, so just every GM and DMs <laughs> in every single game. What am I rolling? Every unsuccess is a success waiting to happen. You are gonna be rolling investigate. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, so four dice. Let's go. Oh, we are looking first, for roll, sixes. First roll, first roll, first roll. Yes, okay, one six. One yeah. six, okay, fantastic. Ooh. So that means you are successful in the task at hand. Now, what's really cool about this particular action is you're allowed to ask two questions and in the cheat sheet thanks to the alexandrian.net you're the best (laughs) love your sheets um you can see some suggested questions or ask your own you're able to ask things like what is hidden here and where is it what has happened here what Mm. threats can i perceive here so based on your questions i'll base my answers on okay um I think uh, what is hidden here and where is it? Okay. Yep. That's a very key uh, question to ask is you are kind of, you know, looking out. Um, you're, I, I feel like almost somebody was smart at some point and like duct taped the edge of the uh, of the hole that y'all made. This like rust hole that you just made bigger, right? Yeah. Uh, so that nobody would get tetanus and um so you're kind of peering around and you still hear this noise um you can't quite see it just yet but out of the corner of your eye as you are kind of looking towards one um one area you can see uh some movement um there is like just this charred metallic stick that is just kind of moving um, off to the corner. You need to get closer to take a look, but it looks like it, it's there's dirt that's being shifted um, from by this thing and uh, possibly trying to get under the the cart. Okay. Hmm. Uh. I don't know if the question, what does it mean, would apply here. It looks like a metallic stick. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, uh, so it's like, a, what does it mean? So this, this stick, you can it, it kind of get, you, you're not sure what it is, right? It's, it's very mm-hmm. foreign looking. It looks really cool, whatever it is. Um, but it's very clearly been used as a tool, as like some type of uh, digging device um it it, just like you would take an actual stick and try to just poorly shovel some dirt and i can't see what's using it i Mm -hmm. just you you only see like the action of like the stick popping around the corner stick's head back down 
Someone's digging under the ox. What? He's like, he's like, I can't. He's like, what? Like, like, like a purse? Like someone's digging, like. I don't know. They're like using a stick and digging. Is it a groundhog? I don't think it's a groundhog. Wait, there's a person outside? I didn't see a person. I just saw a stick. Should we just like shout at them to go away? No, no, you should not. No. What if why? We, what if why not? they don't want to and they see that we're here and then they come towards us with that said stick? We beat them up. Yeah, and we're in we're inside, they're outside. That's why we okay. yell at them from inside. Are there locks on this hideout, Billy? No, but there's Our four of us. Is openable. I mean, yeah. we got we got stuff we can put in the way of the door if it's really like. What do you think is outside? Well, we don't know. And Ben, you think it's like know. a bear? Like bears oh. get scared off when you make noises at them. Yeah, but yeah, bear is not going to use tools. This, I just this, remembered my drive. Use tools. <laughs> Go outside. <laughs> Lowen, where are you going? I don't know. It sounds weird. No, Lowen, you can't just go outside. Someone stop. What if it is a bear? I, well. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, I'll Lowen. go with Lowen. I'll go with Lowen. Yeah, I'm going to because. But I turned to Thomas and I'm like, "See, we should have yelled first. And as then, soon as, as soon as y'all said it was weird, I was like, "Wait, that sounds like." And then I was like, "Drive, drawn to anything different or strange." <laughs> yeah. I'll I will go up to the the cart. Like I wouldn't I won't get off the cart just close enough where I can see them. Okay, so. As you're almost like cartoonishly Scooby doing this, right? You're all kind of like stacked, peering around the corner, um, trying to get a closer look. Uh, Lowen is is the first one that really lays eyes on it, and you standing before you is um, about maybe a two to three foot tall humanoid looking thing. It's it's. It's made of twisted metals, right? Um, uh, there, it, it has two arms. It's got two legs. It doesn't quite have uh, full like fingers like we as humans in the sense. It, it, it's got almost like four just smaller appendages that can be used for various things and right now it's currently wrapped around a piece of shrapnel that it's using as a shovel to try to just start digging you it is it doesn't see you it doesn't notice you um it is just continuing to dig and that noise that you are hearing is the occasional scrape against like the um part of the um part of the the, the trolley car that's a little bit buried in the ground. Um, that's that's what you see. What shape is its head? Was that? What shape is its head? Oh, its head. Yeah, that would be important, right? It, the head is um, very, like, square. Like, almost just like a perfect square, right? Uh, but it, it, it... And it's not... It's not even a head. It just looks like it's this box on top of this other box that has box arms and that has box legs that have all of these exposed wires that are like corded and twisted and braided in this like more like metallic um substance. It's it's just it's not something that you would see. You you would see like there are robots here in the loop, right? Uh, typically your parent, you see them because your parents might like have to go to the gas station, right? And there's an attendant there and that attendant might just happen to be, um, some type of mechanical machine. And this though looks nothing like anything that you've seen before. I, I lean back to Bev. See, being a square can be cool. Bev is like, has like mom armed everybody. 12 year old Bev is mom arming right now. And just kind of slowly reaches down for like a rock on the ground, just in case. Billy's trying to like lean forward, like near one of your mom arms. 
And it's just like, is that Johnny Five? The heck? I think it is alive. It's. Wait, wait. Are you, are you saying there's four more of these? I go talk to it. You you just walk you just walk right up to it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, All right. He's cool. He's a weirdo. Yeah, I know. It's, it's just, just a cute little weirdo. So so you approach it. What? Uh, go ahead and, and explain what what it is that you uh, what what is Lowen doing? Uh, he walks up and like gets close enough that it still doesn't see him. Starts like drawing a really bad sketch of it that looks uh something like this. Um. <laughs> I particularly uh, was, love the leg. He was expecting it to look like this. Uh, <laughs> So he's pleasantly surprised. And then he just like, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. And then like looks back at the group and gives like a thumbs up that looks like naively competent. Does it, does it react to Lowen? Uh, uh, Lowen, have you, you know, go, Lowen, uh, oh, you're not trying to approach quietly though, right? You're, you're no. just, you're just straight up walking towards it. Great. Yes. Perfect. Um, it, <laughs> it, it yeah. as you're walking and, and approaching it, right, and, you, and you've got your drawing pad in hand, um, you kind of like your your shoe hits um, just a little piece of metal that it, it makes just enough sound, and the the robot thing um, immediately perks up and <laughs> spins right around. And just stares at you, holding this stick, trembling. It is just just vibrating in its hand. And the the face, right? It's not your your classic like you know. Oh, it's got two eyes and thing. No, 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 no. It is just this like almost screen, right? That is wrapped around the entire head, and. Uh, as it was turning around to face you, uh, before it fully was able to turn, uh, there was lights that kind of shifted around. So like the back of its head, it looked right at you in this like um, almost like an emoji style, uh, just just very basic, like little lights, um, pixelated lights that kind of like burst out. And, and it doesn't quite look like a face, though. It's just almost just like a ball is is like a a ball of light kind of whoops, swoops around so that it maybe can see you and then it's turning its body towards you and as it's turning that ball is shifting so that it is now looks like it is facing you i can Holy. make my hand vibrate too uh -huh. would i have heard that little oh hell yeah you all heard that <laughs> yeah absolutely I, I I also, rip your jumped. speakers, friends. I don't know how loud that was. <laughs> I would have jumped down and like run towards the group with uh, like whatever close blunt object I could grab. Mm -hmm. Sure, and, and you know there's there's hockey sticks, there's there's baseball bats, uh, golf clubs. There's you know just grab two by fours. You, you can grab whatever you want. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, so I, I would approach. run up and just be like, "What? What was that? What?" Uh, what is that? <laughs> it's a square. D Listen, I. Uh, he's. And Thomas is just like. I. Uh, <laughs> the light, right, is like, instead of the body shifting to make it look like it's like looking at each of you, right? The light is just like shifting sizes. Like it, it almost like it's trying to scan and just try to, like, you know, okay, maybe it's looking at you know, Billy right now. Nope. Maybe it's looking over at, at Lowen. Um, it's just, this, this, this orb is just shifting on the screen as it's just trying to figure out what to do, what's going on. Hey, Hey robot. Hey robot. You got a name? It, it takes a moment. Um, and the, that orb, right. It kind of, slims down and stretches into this black or not black line um like this just blue light just a blue bar um and it waits and it waits and it waits and you hear exactly what you said hey robot do you have a name and it looks like it comes through as like a sound bar right it's like an audio wave 
exactly like you. Mm-mm. 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 Did that, hey. Did that thing just say what you just said? What? Lily, are you number four? Oh, dang. <laughs> Maybe what? I am. <laughs> hey, robot, are we like... <laughs> Billy, is, is there something here? Like, Bill, we, is Billy. there? <laughs> Why did just it just it it might attack? We no, don't. it just what it's just learning. You you don't now hear learn. it say it might attack. D- see, look, Wait. just like Thomas. It's we got. Oh, I turned to the group. I turned back, like so that my back is facing the robot and facing the group. We have to teach this robot how to people. This is our new goal. Come on. That thing, we don't know anything about that thing. That thing could be, there are birds that mimic sound to kill their prey. That thing could be the exact same thing. Thomas is right. Really? Unfortunately, yeah. What do you mean unfortunately? Thomas, shh, it's gonna steal your voice. Shh. That's a real thing? It's gonna steal, oh my God, it's gonna steal your voice. Back. Thomas, Thomas, you can't talk at all anymore. Bev, go ask if it's gonna hurt us. And I push Bev towards it. <laughs> <laughs> ask him if he wants to kill us. But if she asks that, won't it say that? Well, better her, th- I, I don't know, okay? okay so do, like, if we say nice oh. things, maybe it'll be nice. It said like, something. Friends. 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 Bev, ask what it's doing. And I push her again. <laughs> Gonna kick his ass later. <laughs> uh, what you doing there? Doing. Where? With the stick? And, and like Lowen starts like raising his hands and like waving at Bev. <laughs> I oh, just asked the question, what are you doing? What? So so oh. you, you you mentioned the stick, right? Uh-huh. Not a stick stick, but you, you you mentioned it, right? And then the 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 sound bar, right, shifts back to this, you know, the the the, the oval, the the circle for the face, we'll say. And it kind of shifts and looks over to um Lowen. And a couple pixels pop out. So it's it's just this like circle. It's like if you break an egg yolk, right? And it just kind of like spills out. And it's mimicking now the little hand movements that Owen or Owen uh, that Lowen is is doing. And then it starts to take the stick and also do it. Oh my god, it's going to attack us. Are you friendly? Yes or no? Friends. So you can understand what we're saying, yes or no. Yes. Oh. (laughs) See? I will slowly, but still holding the crowbar or whatever, just lower it down a little bit. This is really weird. You're really weird. Be nice. He does. Thomas doesn't doesn't know how to say that. (laughs) Why? Why are you digging? You, you can't ask it questions it hasn't answered yet. <laughs> what? It's like... Uh, it, uh, you, you, you see, see the, the uh, like, like again, that light, light and, and it, it kind of goes, goes flat, flat, like, like it's thinking. thinking. And... What? And did it say end? End. Are you alone? Yes. Hmm. Are you afraid? Afraid. Afraid end. Are you? Are you afraid you're going to end? And it it kind of 
with the body, with the casing that it has, right, it almost kind of slumps a little bit, and oh. the box head looks down. Yes. What? And oh. soon. What? See, I look at, I, I don't know why, but I'm going to look at Lowen. Is he digging a grave for himself? Ask, are you digging your grave? Are you, are you digging? Yeah, what he said. Grave? Do you need, do you need, like, batteries? I point to Bev's Walkman. <laughs> and Bat he, the, the, the whole display, right? Just boom, illuminates. And it is just that bright blue light. And it looks up. Um, very clearly interested in at least knowing the term battery. Oh, Bev, oh, throw it, throw him the oh, batteries. Oh, 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 Bev, oh, you oh, have to oh. give it your batteries. Throw him the batteries. Let's give, let's give him the TV. It doesn't work. I think he wants something that has like, he liked the, the word batteries. So well, maybe, yeah. I mean, if it, 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 you didn't show them the TV. I think he needs power, but we could give him the TV if, he needs parts too. Yeah. Oh, okay. Let's start with the batteries, because I think. And I, I lean over to Billy. Bad. Give him Billy. a battery. Batteries <laughs> are expensive. I'll give and, you batteries. Just give it to him. And Thomas <laughs> thinks he's the smart one, Billy. Ha! <laughs> he ignores that comment, but rolls his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Where yes. are your batteries? Power. Supply. And the and, and this robot will um with with this other hand um the the one still holding the uh, the stick, uh it will open its chest cavity a bit and and how it does so because it's not like it's got like these clunky metal panels or anything on it, it it's it's almost organic looking in its way despite it being very like rectangular and boxy in nature, um. It it kind of it, its fingers start to to twist into warp, um, as if like the little blocks on it are shifting so that it can adjust to these like three prongs that are in the chest cavity, and they fit in it, and you can hear like the whirring noise. It's almost like a screwdriver, right? And then eventually, just like a, a and the panel will kind of open on the chest and shift to the side like it like shifts around um exposing the innards of this thing and it is the most technical thing you have ever seen like like you know those just i mean just like straight out of like star trek okay there is just a bunch of little blinking lights and just you know things that are moving on the inside um but you can see that there is this one area that looks like it had short circuited. And um, so it's a little charred on the inside and that, that little nodule, it almost looks like a battery type. You could kind of guess from that uh, is, is there, there is like, um there's like an led panel on it and it's just like flashing red. Would I have any familiar knowledge of maybe the lay? I'm I'm assuming I'm not gonna know anything about it because it's probably way more advanced than anything I'm used to. Mm -hmm. But is there is the layout kind of similar? Like, is there like a control panel, a little disc that would control it, a microchip gonna, or anything? I'm gonna have you roll a comprehend, and I'd like you to take an extra die with this. Because your father is the owner of Forge Robotics. Right. So you have grown up with probably a, a better understanding of the robotics field than most kids would. Okay, so this is for Comprehend, right? Correct. So it's, okay, got it. Okay. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. I got three. Okay, three successes? Yes, three Fantastic. Successes. That's awesome. Oh, you can't. No, They're I don't. Transparent. I, you're fine, man. I'm sorry. I, like, I, you got three. That's great. So uh, what's actually really cool about this is that for the future, when using this information that I'm about to tell you, you're able to get an additional die. Oh, okay. 
when you're using this very specific type of information when it comes to really now just his innards, his, uh, his working parts. So the funny thing about technology and even advanced technology is that physics is still in play. The uh, things happen in nature, whether you're here on earth or 20 billion, you know, mile, you know, galaxies away. Like it, it, things still just work how they should work. And you, you can very clearly tell that, okay, this is the power source. And if, as you're kind of like looking at it and, and really inspecting it, you can see like, okay, it, it's, these components are plugged into this power source. Um, these components maybe look a little more mechanical versus this is probably what's driving the core of the AI. Um, so you're able to, to, to kind of really kind of get a just a pretty basic understanding of this thing okay um and i would know with the whole red light the, the you say he has short circuited right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so are there any singe marks or like damages done that is pretty apparent oh yeah for sure I, I even on the outside um uh, again it's it's a, a part part of this creature is just kind of like charred um there's you know where instead of it being like this kind of almost like bluish bright metal um there's just areas that are very dark dirty um scratched up um there's definitely like scrapes all over and on the inside um you could kind of tell that like some things got jostled like this probably shifts like it you know like this wire needs to go get tucked back in here this kind of got popped out and you might okay. just need to push it back in place um once thomas sees sees like all of this kind of connected in, in his head he kind of like zones out and just starts walking towards it and like I'm assuming Thomas is always going to have a uh, in his backpack. He always carries some form of like a small little screwdriver or something because, you know, he just <laughs> he likes to tinker and he likes robotics. Yeah. Of so course. Um, he's going to slowly without losing eye contact at those little pieces, take out his little tool set and just start doing what he thinks is correct based off of his previous models in robotics. And just kind of like nothing. He's not trying to go too hard or too hand, but like, like, like you said, like the wire that's like sticking out. Some of the wires might be mm -hmm. ripped apart, so he's trying to rewire them together. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you said that there was like a part for a battery or something that, or like uh, a red flashing light. Yeah. So, so like the the, the power core, we'll call it. Mm -hmm. um, it's just this little box almost, and it, it's got that LED light on it that basically is showing you low charge or malfunction you, you can't quite you don't know what the indicator light is but there's definitely an indicator that probably shouldn't be as low as it is okay i think he, tom should be very careful and very scared like his hands shaking mm -hmm. while trying to do everything and he just cleans them up with the wiring because he's just he mm -hmm. just has to and then he's just like I, I i i think this red leaping light thingy means he's he needs more power but can you make I mean, a roll for me yeah Will you please roll Tinker? How do I do that? Is that? I have a one in that. Is this just a one roll or? Uh, no, it's your tech. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Yep. Yep. It's your uh, your tech plus whatever is in Tinker. I got two sixes. Two sixes. Fantastic. Okay. So as you are kind of just poking around and, and I'd imagine everybody's kind of like hovered like y'all just kind of like what is he do tommy's doing something seriously like leaning in. <laughs> right again it's that scooby-doo like the camera is pointed upwards and it's just you know four kid heads you know hovering around this little tiny robot thing and um so you're you're in there you're kind of like starting to mess around with stuff maybe you're like okay i see like this uh this broke uh, this probably was supposed to be a screw but it's totally broken and you're like trying to like move some stuff around and you you go to uh touch something with your with your screwdriver right and just as you do it you can you just out of the corner of your eye you see where there is a wire that's kind of like just kinked and immediately you pull your your pull your tool you pull i could say words you pull not pull, pull 
your tool away, knowing if you had touched that, you would have been jolted with a buttload of electricity going through you. Okay. Yeah, I, I step back and be like, that was challenge like, number two. Thank you. Oh Jesus! Yeah. <laughs> I was just like he just breathes he's like. Okay. Um. I think something's not fully right with him, but I don't have the proper things to really figure out what's wrong with him. Should we bring him to your dad? No. No. Uh. No. No. He's. Yeah, but your dad's like actually good at this stuff. Yes, Lowen. Can we bring him inside? Yeah, yeah. I, I like that idea more. We should probably yeah, bring maybe, him inside. Maybe he can identify something in there that will help. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just don't want to be outside anymore. That's that's good too. Okay, let's go inside. Hey, hey, uh, friends. What, we, what, what do we what inside? Do we come, what do we come. Him? Ask what, what, him. I don't, oh, yeah, I what, don't... What's your ask... name? Oh, yeah, okay, okay. Does it, does it have hands? You said it, it did, didn't you? Like, yeah, it, yeah it, it's got hand-like appendages. Um, it, it's just... Did it hold a pen? Oh, yeah, it, it can adjust. You've seen it shift its fingers to make itself like a screwdriver. It ha it's, it's, it, it looks like it just adjusts its fingers, again, the, the whatever the fingers are, um, to adjust for the different types of scenarios it may need i'm gonna give it a pen and then hold my drawing pad and then say name and it 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 takes the pen in the one hand and sets down the just drops the the piece of shrapnel and and you're holding the the drawing pad the drawing pad um it kind of like for a moment again that that orb that it's its face. Uh, it kind of flatlines uh, for a moment and uh, eventually shifts back and kind of narrows into like a little tiny, you know, a little, little like golf ball size circle as it starts um, printer style across the paper. And it's just a bunch of weird symbols that make absolutely no sense it was like if webdings printed out on your computer because there's something wrong with your uh with your printer i think their name is gibberish can we call him jib for short can we call you jib jib <laughs> jib. <laughs> jib okay i guess we'll call you jib um yeah, why don't let's just get him? Let's get Jib inside, and then I'll I will see you. Maybe I mean he maybe he's hurt. I, it looks like he's hurt. I I, I I don't know. And then Thomas is gonna walk inside the cart. Yeah. I guess I try to pick him up. <laughs> mm. I was gonna say <laughs> if if is he heavy? Like he's made of pure metal. Uh, he's. He, he's a big boy. I mean, he probably weighs the, like 40, 50 pounds. Oh, okay. 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 I was going to say, I thought you were going to say he's like 100, 200 pounds. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. Okay. No, he's, he's, he's like, he's like, he, uh, like a medium sized dog. <laughs> I was like, I got, got this. I got okay. this. <laughs> Actually, before I go inside, as they like try to pick Jib up and take him inside, can I go look at what he was digging at? Yeah, sure. I just, uh, just want to like I like sidestep and do one of those one eighty just turn around and be like yeah, yeah yeah and just walk around him mm -hmm. and I just want to see what he's digging like why was he digging mm -hmm. so the the hole um, that that he was kind of like digging around um, it it was starting to lead under the uh, one of the carts right and inside you can see just like uh, a a small shiny piece of metal I will try to grab it but not with my bare hands can I just like use like a piece of my shirt and just try to like mm -hmm. eh, 
you know? Yeah, 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 for sure. The, the awkward kid thing. Oh, it's dirt. It's dirty. <laughs> well, aside from that, this alien probably. Also that, yeah, you know, I mean, the, you know, alien, whatever. Um, so you go ahead and, and you pick up this object, and it is just this tiny square piece of metal. It is gold in color, incredibly bright and shiny, and there are definitely just lines dancing all across it um, in these very ornate, um, very uniform patterns. Okay, I, I'll, I'll grab it and I'll just run into the cart fearful and be like, yeah, 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 and then just toss it on like, <laughs> like, a, like a table or something. Like, oh God, okay. <laughs> I totally go pick it up. Mev, don't, t- you, don't, uh, what it might be, you know, we're Jib, just... what is this? Oh god. <laughs> and it 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 it's it you know it it flatlines once again to the audio bar and across its face you can see the sound waves as it, it starts kind of talking or at least attempting to formulate a more proper sentence. The more that you are all talking around it, the more it seems to be picking up to make something a little more Commun- not communicable communicative i think is the word i don't i don't know comprehensive comprehensive there that's a much better word perfect that's why you're the smart one <laughs> <laughs> yeah no, I, I, I dang <laughs> dang was that lord or bev i don't know <laughs> both <laughs> <laughs> totally both <laughs> so uh it 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 looks almost as it is learning you, you are learning it. And the the circle face um, kind of narrows again and almost even shifts colors, right? Instead of this normal blue, uh, it has uh, almost dimmed uh, to a much like darker blue. And it, it reaches out for it and just rests its hand, um, covering up the, the metal piece. Um, Message. Oh my god, it's R2D2. Is is that a are you is that like a message that you are trying to carry? Is oh my, are you are it is R2D2. But I know I just said that. I'm sorry. I just need to make sure sometimes you're going to clarify. Um, can you reread the message? I, I speak to it as if it doesn't. Like, I do one of those very inconsiderate. Can you read message to Jib? And right right back at you, right? It like it doesn't have to move its head, remember? The, just the orb just kind of shifts around its head to look at you. Um and it goes can you not <laughs> oh my god jim just told you jim you just you. told you uh, Slay, told you, you got told oh. you I'm like, I put my hand up, I'm like, Jim, high five! And I hold it there and I wait. <laughs> and it, 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 Jim just mimics you. It yeah, just like raises I, I, its arm. Just, just like I, how, how Lowen showed him. Yeah. I take, I take my hand and I like bop it to Jim's hand. And I'm like, yeah! I just put my head down. I'm just like, <sighs> yeah, can you not? That's the best. That's the best. I just say ignore. I just imagine everyone just like, yeah, fuck you, Tom. <laughs> and I'm just going to ignore everyone. I'm just going, is this important? What is like? What does just, it say? Jim, what, what does yeah, it say? Yeah. Message. What does it say? Encrypted. Not for my cores to process. Must deliver, but failed and you know he, it, it, it kind of shifts its head now and again 
kind of indicates um, the failing power supply. Oh, right. Um, batteries, batteries. What confirmation that he's R2-D2, he needs to deliver a message. Uh, <laughs> to who? To who? To who? A princess! Wait, I, wait, he, don't. I, wait, is I it from something? a princess or for a princess? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> and she's really more like, like a, like a rebel leader princess. That's true. That's true. That's true. Rebel leader. Princess. So oh is it God. for is it for a Jedi? Jim, are you a rebel? I just look at both of them as they have this like conversation with Jed. I'm just like Jedi? Yeah. <laughs> like who's it for? Is it for like an old man of a lost order of peaceful warrior? The, the 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 bar line uh, the audio line again just kind of flat lines for a moment as it's thinking um, trying to to figure out calculate how to respond again the more that you're talking to it the more words that it's 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 kind of beginning to process and program within itself um, through like adaptive learning and rebel leader here. Yes, who is the rebel leader of Hawthorne Heights? Gorn. Horn? Gorn. Thorn? Gorn. Gorn. Corn? He's saying Thorn, thorn Bev. Thorn. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna go get an extension cord and see if I can just lead it over to to as I'm watching Lowen do this, would my knowledge of robotics tell me whether or not sticking an extension cord into an unknown <laughs> robot is dangerous? I need to I... know if I should stop him or not. Uh, you're going to roll for sure on this. Damn it. Um, how about comprehend? Because this, this definitely is a skill that is, do you have the right piece of information? <laughs> Do you know this already? Oh, do I get a plus one because this is about his innards? Yes, you do. Okay, cool. Because it is Thank very God. much about his innards. <laughs> I'm so glad I know a lot about his innards. <laughs> Come on, give me a six. Um, no sixes. I got two ones. Is that is that a, like a you fail, you suck thing or no? Nope, not at okay. all. Um, now okay. I'm I'm gonna remind you because we're you know we're all kind of getting used to the tales from the loop rules. Uh, you do have luck. Most of you are aged 13 or 12, which means you have at least one or two oh. or two or three luck points. And unlike Coriolis, uh, it doesn't fuck with you later on to use your luck. You're just lucky. It's good stuff. Good stuff happens. You are able to reroll your die. You are also able to check your pride if you would like to. Um, but that is a one time use. There's only four episodes. Oh, so I can use my pride so you can only once. Only pride once. Okay. Ever. What about, what for about this luck? story? Do, does the luck come back? Um, luck will because we're running such a short campaign. Luck will run out. Okay. But so you can have, earn luck. I, have... I, I I did like um, I, I, the to the use of inspiration uh, to award luck points. Okay. So I have two. So if I use one now, I won't get that one back. Correct. Is, Just is there a only four episodes? Okay. Um, can we I'm, assist Thomas? Yes, yes, you can. Absolutely, you can uh, do a PC assist. So, uh, it'll. What, what What are you doing? I'm assuming you're, you're going to go ahead and do it, Billy. You're going to try to assist. Oh. Yeah. Well, okay. Because how, how, how would coming, you assist? I'm trying to think about this. Lowen is coming at Gib with uh, an extension cord, and Thomas is obviously into like. Uh oh, like concern mode. Um, Y'all are gonna be real disappointed when I get to this robot with the extension cord. I'm just gonna <laughs> say it. I don't think I don't, I'm doing exactly what you all think I'm doing. I just want to know if. Yeah. I just want to know if it's dangerous. Like my yeah. knowledge of it. Yeah, I'm. I'm wondering if like I can use. I'm trying to think of some equivalent. I don't know if we have like gloves in here, but I at least have my leather jacket to keep mm -hmm. in the way of like so we can fiddle with mm -hmm. stuff, but. Mm -hmm. But have a protective coating. That's my okay. only concern. If we want, if we want to like hack this 
um, you know, extension cord and then hot wire it to mm-hmm. a battery to at least have that insulation is is my sure. Process. I'll 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 take that. Super. It probably wouldn't work in real life, but it absolutely would fucking work here in the loop. Um, oh yeah. So you get a <laughs> you don't get a reroll, uh, but you do okay. get a plus one, so you can roll one more die. I roll one more, just one die. Yep, yep, because that's okay. uh that's PC assistance. I got six. Way! All right. So, so seeing like, 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 like Billy, I think you're almost like, you can see the look, the concerned look on, um, on Thomas's face, right? As Owen is approaching, you know, just looming with this, you know, extension cord (laughs) and you kind of like start taking the, you know, your cool ass leather jacket off. Right. And you just kind of like hold it up and, and Thomas is like, yeah yeah okay um it's possible any type of energy can be moved to anything else essentially it's just you have the right parts is it too much is it not enough you you have no way to gauge unfortunately because this is alien technology versus like you would probably know how many watts uh, a radio can handle right. or it needs lowen think- proper protective equipment I throw my jacket. I just like wham. <laughs> Lo, what do you, what do you, what are you planning to do there? Ask, give if this will help. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> okay, okay. I thought you were going just, to. It was the look in your eye. It, it was, was so focused. There was, there was Everyone a, else was talking. There was a lot going on. I, I assumed you were gonna just. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. No, it's, it seemed like you were going for it. So, you know, just like safety first. We just first, never but... know what to expect, Lowen. And that's a good thing. That's All a good thing. Is... On one of my I mean, quotes here. I mean, if, if you ask, I tell you every time. Yeah, no, I never asks. I, I guess it's a good point. Um, well, All right, Lowen, why don't, you, why don't you ask? Get, oh, my head hurts. Gib. I have a card with energy in it. Will this help you? Yes, yes. or no? Oh, do you want me to just hand it to you? And it doesn't It doesn't respond. It instead starts reaching out towards it, and its fingers again are just like... <laughs> I don't even put it around my hand. <laughs> and Billy doesn't have a jacket no more. <laughs> Oh, cool. Iconic item lost. It's gone. Oh no, Snow Dogs! Just thank you so much, Snow Dogs. Thank you everybody so far who's do- who's done the challenge. Right, we've gone through two challenges. You've now just activated a third challenge. So why would I- you do that now? I, I mean, I'm thankful, but also <laughs> dang it. I, I know these people. They always do it at the fucking end. That's how this works. And we are coming on our two-hour time limit. So, <laughs> with that in mind, uh, the 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 um uh, jib is reaching out and its fingers are twisting and shifting and the little plates are kind of it, it's trying to f- calculate and figure out the shape of the extension cord right and it 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 kind of almost make is this is this the um <laughs> is this the male or female end that you're handing it <laughs> <laughs> Might be uh... really nerdy about it <laughs> I'm going to roll for it because I don't know. <laughs> Female. Female. Okay, great. So it is, it, it's, it's trying to make some prongs out of its, its articulated fingers. Um, and it's just reaching out and starts plugging in and, um, a little way. <laughs> sure. You, you move away. You still got the jacket kind of huddled no, no, around no. you. I stand there. I oh, just look away. Oh, you look away. Oh, it's not going to matter because there is just this <laughs> huge flash of light. The, the robot just gets blown across. Uh, you hear just metal on metal slamming onto the door. Um, anything that was actually plugged in and getting power just now shuts off. So if the radio is on, boom, no power. Um, any other type of electronic hmm. device that was tapped into that particular particular unit, no power. But unbeknownst to you, as you are all kind of like starting to 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 look around and, and like 
you know, your eyes are adjusting to this light. You know, you're trying to see where Jib just went. Um, the camera shifts and moves out of the uh, out of the, the 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 train car and starts tilting upwards. And you can see uh, against the sunset as as it's getting darker outside, just grids of of subdivisions. <laughs> oh god are being blacked out and that's where we're gonna end it tonight I fucking knew you little <laughs> shit I, I knew the moment you plugged it in some, something's gonna black out and it's gonna end right there you <sighs> amazing <laughs> Woo! I'm gonna say this right now I know we're all thinking it Jib must be protected. He yeah. must be protected. He's like Carl. I, I love my robots. That's just a reoccurring thing. And and thanks, oh Jace, for yes, Sal and, and Jib will now be friends <laughs> forever. <laughs> oh, oh, <man>. Wow. <laughs> Thank you all so much for uh just being you i'm so glad that you agreed to do this because i just wanted to play with all of you and i hope you had a good time we will uh we'll go ahead uh do do a little round robin please let everybody know who you are where they can find you what you're doing this week and next week any projects that you want to to plug and pimp out please feel free to do so here i will uh i i have a link at least to everybody's twitter on hand uh next time i'll have all like special links whatever you need whatever you want to get uh uh put out there uh but uh we'll go ahead and uh let's let's uh let's do reverse order so lauren hi goodbye hi I'm I'm so into this. I can't wait to see what happens next. Uh, yes, Jib is an angel. And I will protect. Will protect. Uh, I'm Lauren. I'm that salty ginger over on Twitter and half of Salty Sweet Games here on Twitch. Uh, I run games and play games all around the internet at the Scraticus Academy. Uh, at Off the Table here on Nomadic and on my own channel. Uh, the next thing we're doing over there is Masks of Nyarlathotep, 9 a.m. Pacific on Saturday. It's my Pol Cthulhu baby, um, and they're just getting into the main mystery. So if you want to check me out, you can come over there Saturday mornings. All right. Well, thank you for sharing, and thank you for being here. And I've seen you three times this week. Gotta say, yeah. it's pretty cool. You're pretty it's cool. Nice, right? It's nice. I like it. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Um, all right. Shifting on over to Gabe. How's it going? And thank you for all of your incredible. I hope you're going to take a picture and share those with everybody. Like, oh, I've got a bunch. They're so yes. cool. Oh, so oh. good. So, hi, I'm Gabe, Gabe James Games on Twitch, Twitter, and pretty much anywhere else on the internet. Uh, you can find me actually in an hour on the Wandering DM channel in the Witcher Ooh. Tabletop RPG. Uh, you can find me on Wednesdays in a couple weeks DMing a game of Zweihander on Encounter Roleplay, the Gala of the Damned. I've been wanting to do a clue-like game and get the audience involved, see if they can figure out who's trying to murder someone, so I'm excited to see who's right and wrong. Um, you can find me on Fridays on the Drop the Die channel in the All Rogues game, and currently I'm... Uh, I need to post it. I finished a chart of 100 different rumors and conversations for your fantasy games. If you ever run out of ideas for what your players are encountering, just roll in a chart and make them look for something that's not even in the game yet, because it's the easiest way to build the same thing without having to do all the work yourself. I need I that out, so badly. Oh, yeah. I just put them in a tavern, and I roll in the chart, and then they get a, uh, they they hunted down a rumor of people disappearing in a candy cane forest, and that was a whole lovely plot hook. But yes, this was fantastic. I, I'm realizing more and more, I think I accidentally just made a younger version of myself. Um, I, oh gosh, I should not have plugged that thing in the robot. I mean, if you just blame it on your, your 12, you're 13 years old, like, that's true. sometimes yeah. there's things that you don't know, right? Because so you just don't know. Did Lowen get, did Lowen get blasted back? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to find out. I'm in the hideout. I'm immune. I planned for this. That's why I took him inside. Oh, snap. <laughs> that, yes, yes. You, you, I can't hurt you. Also, uh, fun, fun game mechanic. I totally never mentioned, uh, kids can't die. That's a thing. So just do all the stupid things that you want to do. There's consequences, but no, no, no. Yeah. 
Low, low one's fine. You're good. <laughs> but thank you. We'll uh we'll shift on up to M1123. What's up, Paul? Hello. My name is Paul. You can find me on Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, all that as at N1123. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just watching Lauren pull the pin. I didn't see uh, you put that on, so I've been like looking at it the whole time. Like, did I? <laughs> that is magical, mother. <laughs> Some big ass <laughs> bandage. <too. laughs> uh, but yeah, you can find me on Twitter, all that is at one three, everything like that. Uh, you also find me on Thursday, along with Gnome over at Unmade's Gaming's channel for uh, Coriolis Void, where I play a socially inept assassin, and he's starting to learn how to understand to be more human. Um, after he excommunicated from his father, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, I do. I started up streaming a little bit again, just for fun. It's very casual, like Tuesdays and Fridays. We just play a couple games, we hang out, we talk about business a little bit, and just just chill. So if you want to hang out, have some time, come through. If not, shit. All right, cool. That's it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, go shit. I guess. <laughs> yeah, go. Everybody's shit. got. All... Everybody's got it. <laughs> I oh, I will say. That's your sign off for now, this. On, Paul. <laughs> that's why just go take a shit um this is super fun i'm so glad i was blessed enough to play with everyone and this is gonna be a, a, a awesome next couple of weeks so super excited yay jib ah! i'm not actually an ass by the way just got just so you guys know kind of sorry i'm done that's it we love you so much paul oh <laughs> uh, and just hi how you doing I'm great. This is so much fun. I'm so glad I get to play in the game with y'all. This game is the first. This is my first time playing Tales from the Loop, and I love it. I can't believe we already have a new robot friend. This is the best. <laughs> I'm so excited. Um, but yeah, I'm Jess. You can find me at go underscore JG in almost all the places online. Um, I do stream a wide variety of video games and tabletop role playing games. We have an ongoing uh blades in the dark series on rotating saturdays we often do fiasco fridays and we love showcasing lots of little uh indie ttrpgs stuff that we find over on itch.io and then we we play for the first time ever live on stream just for fun and we learn along with y'alls and then we post it up on youtube so if you want to figure it out because as we figured it out uh that's a good place to do so but um yeah and i also uh sometimes i make games and i also put those on itch.io so you know um something something there but this is so exciting thank you so much i i, I can't i already is it oh my god i want to play that already <laughs> it's so good <laughs> oh that makes me so happy i i love this game and i basically just always want to run it uh <laughs> hi oh she's my dog's excited <laughs> hi but oh, you're okay you're fine um yeah, so the, the, the more people that I get to share this game with, the uh, the happier I am, and I love it. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you got, you all had a good time, and hopefully uh, everybody who tuned in and enjoyed us also have a good time. Um, I do want to take a quick moment before I do my own outro, though, to say thank you. Uh, we had three challenge bars. Three. Three challenge bars today. That is wild. So a uh, big thank you and shout out and, and, and a big old gnome heart uh to snow dogs geo nerd and unmade gaming uh for making some of the chaos that happened here tonight and i mean mike right off the bat before like he even knew you mike was just like yo fuck you guys like okay great so that was the no thing mike. now we <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yep 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 so if, if you didn't know uh if, if you didn't know mike now you do hashtag blame mike uh mike so sucks. <laughs> so the first challenge uh, uh, we used was uh, Samantha Johnson came in and she was going to tattle on you. She was going to catch you all in the act of rummaging, right? Because uh, you're definitely kind of doing something you probably should be doing you know, when the teacher wasn't there. And um, how you no. kind of countered that. Let me beat up Samantha. <laughs> I mean, y'all verbally her. beat her up. Like, That's true. Well, she shouldn't talk like that. Decimated. <laughs> Tell yeah. her to take her gum out. Like, mm -hmm. what the <laughs> Now, just because that, that situation was kind of worked out, we'll say, doesn't mean that there won't be reprieve and consequence later on. This is still, like, Samantha Johnson, who's mom might actually just be the secretary so you know 
just saying, like, you need to be careful how you talk to some people. Samantha importance. sucks already. I already hate her. <laughs> yeah, it's I, great. I have She's Samantha great. Johnston, blonde, grade eight, secretary horse. <laughs> is my notes. <laughs> so, <laughs> secretary horse. Is well, because uh, well. that's what Lowen drew her. Mm-hmm. I can't believe that you did that. That was so good. Um, the the second uh, challenge that came into play was um, one that uh, Paul, uh, that Thomas was actually able to avoid um, having that knowledge of circuitry uh, poking in there into alien technology that is already short circuited. Uh, surely it's not a smart thing to do without some type of rubber to protect yourself um, as you're putting a metal screwdriver into this thing um but you were able to roll enough uh where you averted uh, a potential hazard and uh then the third challenge also dealt with electricity right at the very end so snow dogs thank you for making that happen uh not only did we just blow our new robot friend to the sky um oh no but Don't there's it, it it blew the the entire power grid <laughs> so there's that. But thank you all <laughs> for coming to hang out and joining me. My name is Nomadic. Uh, you can find me here uh, every Tuesday in May. We are playing Tales from the Loop, and I can guarantee you this was so much fun. Thank you all so much. Like, the players, like, seriously, I, ah, I, y'all the best. Um, we're going to play, we're, you're going to see a lot more Tales from the Loop on this channel. I can promise you that. And um, you can catch me Mondays uh, with Lauren. Lauren. Lauren, you're over there for me, uh, playing uh, Barrier Peaks, which is a second edition module converted to fifth edition, ran by Allison Robinson, and it is such a fun time. Another great cast of people, and uh, just just a whole hell of a lot of fun. Uh, good good times with some classic Dungeons & Dragons stuff. On Wednesdays, you can uh, catch uh, new episodes of the Rise of the Demigods podcast over on the God's Fall Twitch channel. Thursdays, I'm over with Paul. Paul, you're over there, buddy. Uh, uh, <laughs> yes, uh, absolutely. Dabs are welcomed and encouraged here. Thank you all so much for your participation. Uh, on Unmade Gaming's channel, where we play Coriolis, uh, a Coriolis game called The Void. And Coriolis is actually the same system as Tales from the Loop, uh, just a lot more complicated. Tales from the Loop is a lot less complicated. Uh, but it's super fun if you like some space opera drama. Uh, that's definitely the place to be. Uh, I may or may not have had a first uh, character kill, and that's horrifying. It is played my personal say... dreams. It's great. Come watch in. Come come tune. Come join us. Yeah. What's Gnome's up? character is absolutely soft boy so you guys should definitely go watch shut him up, and shut he up, Paul. is shut up. You're he, done? he is you're done. jeb you're done saying you're done shut up shut up shh. Shh. i love you uh <laughs> fridays i'm back in the gm's chair uh this is just a very gm heavy month i haven't gm'd in a year and I'm going to be running a bunch of Twitch partners uh, over on the Cantrip Breakers channel over on Twitch uh, through the Lost Mine of Fandelver, which is just honestly one of the best canned adventures that is out there. It is classic Dungeons & Dragons. It's got the dungeons. It's got the dragons. Like, it's so great to run new players through and old players through. I love it. I can't wait. Come join us. It's actually a daytime game. So if you're having lunch, you got a lunch break. Come hang out. Come tune in. Listen up. You know, we're there because it's lunch for me. It's not for them. They're all like European. So it's like eight o'clock at night for them. <laughs> so, you know, they're going to go to bed right after. But that's where you can find me. And again, uh, thank you all so much for coming to hang out. We truly, truly appreciate it. Thank you to all the subs, the new follows. Uh, Y'all are just absolutely fantastic. Uh, you can actually catch me and uh, Eris Avad uh, also uh, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday uh, back here on the channel. Grab a cup of coffee. We do something called Gnome Brew. Just a chill chat and uh, come shoot the breeze with us while you start your day because that's what we're doing. And until next time, we'll see you guys next week. Have a good one. Bye.